Okay, so in this next video, what we're going to do is uh, use the moment generating function that we've just calculated for the gamma distribution uh, to uh, work out the first and second moments of the gamma distribution, i.e. the expected value of the gamma distribution and the expected value of the gamma distribution squared. Uh, and then what we're going to do uh, is use those to calculate the variance of the gamma distribution. So in this video, we're going to see how to calculate the mean and the variance of the gamma distribution. Uh, so firstly, let's just um, have a bit of a recap of why why the gamma oh, sorry why the moment generating function is so useful for calculating the moments of of a distribution basically. Uh, so why it's called the moment generating function basically. So uh, let's just rem remind remind ourselves that the uh, moment generating function of any old random variable x as a function of little t is going to be equal to, well, it's really the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, the e to the tx times the probability density function of big X evaluated at little x at dx. Uh, so the reason before that I um, just integrated from zero to infinity was that uh, for the gamma distribution, the um, the probability density function is just zero on the uh, on the non-positive real numbers. Uh, therefore, it, we don't need to do the integral from negative infinity to infinity. We can just do the integral from zero to infinity and plug in what the moment gen sorry what the probability density function is on the positive real numbers. Okay, so that's why um, why this integral wasn't between negative infinity and infinity for the um, probability density function of the gamma distribution. Okay, uh, so remember that this, the definition of this, by the way, was just the expected value of e to the tx, and by Lotus, that becomes this. Okay, uh, so uh, why does the, is this so related to the moment? Well, it's because you could ex think about expanding this exponential in terms of its, um, in terms of its Taylor expansion. So in terms of its Taylor expansion, remember the function e to the x, the Taylor expansion of e to the x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power of 4 over 4 factorial, etc. And it goes on and on and on, all the way up to countable infinity, plus x to the n over n factorial, etc. Right, uh, so uh, if you imagine uh, we're taking the exponential of e to the tx, so we'll have to substitute in the t, so I'll just put that in. e to the tx is going to be 1 plus tx plus tx squared, uh, 2 factorial, over 2 factorial, plus uh, t cubed, uh, sorry, oh dear, t to the, well, you could split it up, but t x cubed uh, over 3 factorial, etc., onwards, plus t x to the power of n over n factorial. Okay, uh, so there's that uh, expected value of e, uh, sorry, that's the, uh, that's the Taylor expansion, or if you like, because it's centered at zero, it's the Maclaurin expansion, if you like, uh, of e to the tx. And now what we can do is imagine substituting that in for this. And again, we're wearing our applied mathematician hat here. Um, so uh, that would make the moment generating function of this random variable big X as a function of little t is equal to, to the integral from negative infinity to infinity. And now substitute this in, we'll get 1 plus tx plus tx squared over 2 factorial, and I won't bother putting any more, so I'll just put plus dot dot dot, and then times uh, the probability density function of uh, the random variable big X as a function of little x dx. Okay, now have we got any more? Yes, we have. Right, so let me just copy that down onto the next other side, and we'll continue on from there. Okay, let me just also alter the camera, because it's a bit of an odd angle. Okay, that's better. So the moment generating function of, uh, of uh, a random variable big X as a function of little t is going to be the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, this or this expansion of e to the tx, which is one plus tx plus tx squared over two factorial, etc. Dot dot dot. Uh, times the probability density function evaluated at little x dx. Now, if we imagine uh, expanding this out, i.e. applying the distributive property here, uh, then what this is going to become is the integral from negative infinity to infinity of, um, uh, so 1 times the probability density function, 
evaluate at the two x plus tx times uh, the probability density function here, evaluated at the two x plus uh, tx squared over two factorial the probability density function evaluated at the two x and etc. You could go on at uh, dx. Now, uh, this is the uh, big belief step in as far as pure mathematics is concerned. We can imagine, uh, we know of course that the integral of f plus g dx, where f and g are two functions, let's say, dx, is going to, between, let's say, a and b, that, that, that the integral does distribute over this, so it becomes the integral from a to b of f dx plus the integral from a to b g dx. However, we do not know, of course, that this integral is going to distribute over an infinite number of terms. So, we're going to, in the spirit of applied maths again, we're just going to do it without a second thought and just... It, obviously, you could justify this with rigorous pure maths. Um, that it, it would, it's not true arbitrarily. It would, does need to. It does need the fact that this exponential is very, very nicely behaved, and this uh, Maclaurin, uh, sorry, this Taylor series is very, very nicely, but converging to e to the tx. Um, but in this case, because the Taylor expansion of e to the tx is so beautiful, uh, you can actually replace this with uh, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f big x as a function of little x dx plus, then this next one, the integral from negative infinity to infinity tx times f of big x little x dx plus, etc. You go on negative infinity to infinity of tx cubed to the power of over 3 factorial uh, f x little x dx and you go on etc right uh, so now what we can do is expand out these brackets here and pull out the t because we uh, because the t's play no part I mean oh dear what's happened here this should have been the squared one I do apologize for that and you can pull out the t, basically, from each of these. So, if I write this out first, there's a great big sum. So, if I write this out as the sum from r is equal to 0 to infinity of the integral from negative infinity to infinity of uh, the probability density function of, little, uh, of big X as a function of little x times uh, its uh, tx to the power of r over r factorial dx, okay? Like that. So that's what this is equal to. And a big step of belief was uh, was the uh, step that I could interchange this summation and the integral, basically. Okay. Uh, and if you want to see a proof of that, I think it's uh, I think you see a proof of that in complex analysis. So take a course in complex analysis. Okay. Uh, I don't think it would be in a first course in real analysis anyway. But you do a lot of things like this, uh, interchanging the order of um, order of um, summation and integration and complex analysis. Okay. Uh, so and you use the fact that it works for these um, Taylor expansions. Okay. Uh, so um, right. So. Um, now what we can do is pull out the t here, so we can say that this is equal to the sum from r is equal to 0 to infinity of, um, and we can pull out the r factorial, I do apologise, we can pull out the t to the r and the r factorial. So we now pull out that t to the power of r, and we pull out that r factorial, and then we have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of, uh, what's left is we still have the probability density function, and what's left of this, we still have the little x to the power of r dx, because we couldn't pull that out, because that's playing a part in the integral. Okay, uh, but this is just the definition of the rth moment. So this is the expected value of x to the power of r, just by lotus. Uh, it's, uh, if you imagine x to the r as being a transformation of the random variable x, uh, then this is what uh, the expected value of that transformation of that random variable would be. So that's the rth moment of uh, the random variable big X. So this becomes the summation from r is equal to 0 to infinity of t to the power of r over r factorial e of x to the r, basically, the rth moment. Okay, and that is going to be equal to the moment-generating function of big X as a function of little t, basically. 
Okay, uh, so if we want to get these ARF moments out of the moment generating function, and by the way, that's why it's called the moment generating function, that equation there. Okay, uh, what we can do is we can basically, if I write this out, it will become more obvious, but we can differentiate this just like it's effectively got the same sort of form as a Taylor expansion, and uh, the coefficients are going to be the derivatives of this, basically. So if I write it out, we have that the moment generating function of the random variable big X as a function of little t is going to be equal to, so when r is equal to 0, you get t to the power of r, which is just 0. You get over 0 factorial, which is what, sorry, t to the power of 0 is going to be 1. Uh, and over 0 factorial is still 1, so you get the expected value of uh, e to the x 0, which is again going to be the expected value of 1. So basically you just get 1 in that first term. Then for the second one, you get... Um, when we put in r is equal to zero here, uh, you get um, the uh, you get uh, sorry. When we put in r is equal to one here, you get t to the power of one over one factorial times the expected value of e of x uh, of x to the one rather. So we get uh, t times the expected value of x. So the first moment. Then onwards, we get uh, when r is equal to two, we get t squared over two factorial. Uh, times the second moment, e of x squared, and you could go on, etc. Right, so if we evaluate this at zero, so if we evaluate the moment generating function at zero, uh, which we can do beca because remember the moment generating function was defined on uh, the t values less than. Uh, lambda, and lambda we knew was greater than zero, so t, if t is equal to zero, that certainly satisfies the condition that it's going to be less than lambda, because lambda was going to be greater than zero. Okay, uh, so the moment generating function then, so if we evaluate it at zero, we're going to get one. Uh, if we then differentiate it, if we want to find this expected value of x here, what we can do is differentiate both sides with respect to t. And again, this is a leap of belief as far as uh, pure mathematics is concerned, that we can differentiate this power series in this way by just differentiating term by term. Uh, so this becomes obviously the derivative of the power series, 1 plus t times the expected value of x plus t squared over 2 factorial times the expected value of x squared, etc. And now the leap of belief is that saying that the di differentiation distributes over the terms. Uh, so this becomes the derivative with respect to t of 1 plus uh, the derivative with respect to t of t times the expected value of x plus uh, the derivative with respect to t of t squared over 2 factorial the expected value of x squared, etc. dot dot dot. Right? And now if we perform those derivatives, the derivative of 1 is just going to be 0. The derivative of this, this is a constant. The expected value of x is just a constant. So this becomes plus the expected value of x. Then this one, if we differentiate this, you uh, you lower the power by 1 and multiply through by the old power. So you multiply by 2 and then lower the power to 1. So this becomes plus t. The 2 that you multiply by when you differentiate cancels with the 2 on the bottom. So this becomes t over 1 factorial times the expected value of x squared. And let me just do one more. The next term would be t to the 3 over 3 factorial times the third moment, the expected value of x cubed. Uh, that is going to become uh, plus, uh, if we raise, if we uh, lower the power by 1, we'll get 2. Multiply through by the old power, we get uh, t squared, and the 3 cancels with the 3 that's going to be in the bottom. So that goes down to, this would have been 3 times 2 times 1, 3 factorial. It's going to go down to 2 times 1, so 2 factorial times the expected value of x cubed. Okay, so now if we evaluate that at 0, then what's going to happen? This, when we put in 0 here, that's going to go to 0. When we put in 0 here, all of the terms with the t's in front of them is still going to go to 0. The only thing we're going to get now is the expected value of x. So we're going to get the first moment. More generally, what's going to happen is that if you want, uh, if you want the... Um, let me find some more paper. Okay, we'll use this. More generally, what's going to happen is that if you want uh, the half moment, let's say, if you want the half moment, then that is going to equal the half derivative with respect to t of the moment generating function 
evaluate it at t is equal to zero. So let me just uh, remind you, the moment generating function was going to be equal to the sum from r is equal to zero to infinity of uh, t to the r over r factorial times the expected value of x to the r. So when you differentiate it r times, what happens is uh, that uh, the only, t uh, well, and then evaluate it at t is equal to zero. What happens is all the terms that are below r, all, all of those are differentiate out basically, they become just zero, so they go by the time you take in the rth derivative. And the rth term becomes just a constant, it just becomes the rth moment, because every time you differentiate this, the r, uh, each one of the powers comes down basically, and that will cancel with this uh, this factorial down here. So all that's left is the um, rth moment, basically. And then the terms beyond that, they're still going to have t's in there, uh, t's in there in front of them. And when you evaluate it at t is equal to zero, they're just going to go to zero. So basically, that is how you can um, you can extract the information about the moments uh, from the moment generating function. Okay. So now let's uh, just, in fact, we'll call it a day there and then continue on in the next video.